But the topic today is like entrepreneurial marketing or thinking as an entrepreneur for starting up, right? You basically have the problem that you're starting by zero and wants to, wants to go to one, which is like a factor of infinity. If you go to one to 100, it's just a factor of 100. But from zero, nobody knows you, to one, it's infinity basically you need to achieve. So, and you have the problem that you have no money, you have maybe better place, you get, you get some money there, some marketing tool, but basically you're like really short of money. So, but you, what you have is your creativity, right? Your necessity pre brings uh, creativity. Again, this is like a quote from Richard Branson. And you also start with a blank sheet of paper. You start by zero, but you can start from scratch. And then you have the opportunity to be different. Actually, like you need to be different to be recognized, perceivable to, to your competitors, to the already established competitors who have like contacts, who have money, and all this. So how do you achieve? How do you go, how do you do marketing? How do people get to know your product? Forget about marketing. Marketing is a monster. Marketing costs money, yeah? The end customer has to pay. Maybe you're giving like, have like a lot of marketing budget and you're not getting any, any customers and you just have cost. And marketing also doesn't work. Marketing also doesn't work. Anybody clicks on Google, on the Google paid advertising anymore? Not many, right? And if you look at the newspaper, like the, the advertising is not really like appealing or look at the TV commercials. They don't really work. So, but as a startup, as a founder, as an entrepreneur, you have some advantages. One is like not doing marketing, but getting attention. Marketing is just the convention, but you, what you really want is attention. Again, like paid advertisement um, are expensive and are not really effective. You can use your personal background and the innovative aspects of your product. One example is again, this is Holger Johansson from eBüro. Remember eBüro said like, okay, um, put your, uh, leave the secretary service to us yeah, and you can focus um, on your, on your um, work, on your actual work. Um, outsource the secretary to us and you can work from anywhere. So what he did, he rented like an office in Berlin, really cheap, really poor, but he said it's going to work. And the, the floor, the floor, the ground was really bad, yeah, really old um, wood and everything. So what he did, he bought three tons of sand and put it in the office, yeah, which has like a big marketing effect. It, uh, it's cheaper than renovating the place. Yeah? The uh, employees, the team members, were walking there barefoot on flip-flops and had a speech feeling. Yeah? And he got into the press. Yeah? He, because he said, in this office, uh, you can portray, uh, you can um, make a report about the nice startup office here, and it's fitting to our culture. Go to the beach, entrepreneur, and leave the secretary, secretary service to us. So you get a lot of attention for this. Again, think, don't think like as a business manager, don't think in marketing terms, think as an artist. How got, how got artists, how, get, how did they get famous? Yeah? By selling art. Yeah? Yeah. Another thing about like approaching marketing, marketing differently is authenticity. Yeah? Be authentic. Nowadays, like if you look at the big businesses, they are not really authentic. Yeah? They are not really linked to the founders or to the culture anymore. Linked to the people, and again, like avoid trying to sell them too much. Don't be, too, don't be too commercial, but try to establish links between them. Yeah? And don't f try to sell products so much. Yeah? If you go into products, you're going into, your product will eventually become a commodity. Yeah? You will you need to, to compete with products from China or from anywhere else or from Thailand or Africa later on. So don't focus so much on the product. Use the product as a transmitter of a story, of an experience, of a value, something you want to see uh, what happens in the world. And link to the traditional roots. We always tell our startups, 
try to secure the home market. Yeah? Don't think about internationally for the next 10 to 12, 15 years. Yeah? Try to become market leader in the home market, and that's like enough of a big challenge, actually. And then you need to link to the traditional roots and the cultural heritage. You can play with this. Yeah? Look at, look at like the founder from IKEA said, like, actually, like, what you, you can just go international by using your cultural heritage. Yeah? And if you look at IKEA, they are playing with this uh, Swedish heritage model. Just to remind us, culture is the base of everything. Yeah? You need to be embedded in society values and society culture. <coughs> Another thing is like ec to approach marketing differently again is economics of um, symp sympathy. Yeah? Try to be, don't try to sell so much, but try to see like, okay, which customers you like, which customers uh, like you, and try to make, um, try to build a tribe, basically. The following. Okay, so basically right now, yeah, we want to do the speed pitching, and Jochen and Vernon are helping me a little bit. But we needed to do, we need to go into the other room, yeah. But we, but before, the speed pitching is a great method to for three things basically: to pitch your idea, to get feedback and to find sparing partner, people you can connect, and people um, you think, okay, good questions, but maybe the other questions were a little bit better. Yeah? So you can find a team, team members for this. So how it works is, anybody of you knows like speed dating maybe? Yeah, I know it from the movies. Yeah? So like, for example, maybe you can come here, maybe we expand. Like, so we are standing in front of each other. Yeah? I am explaining my idea in 90 seconds. Yeah? Then Jochen is asking me questions. Yeah? And I'm not answering the questions. Yeah? I will have like some paper and some pen, write down the questions yeah? and see how the questions, how I can further, further develop my, my idea, my concept. Yeah? He will ask questions for 90 seconds, yeah? then the roles change, he will pitch his idea for 90 seconds, then I will ask questions, he will write down the questions and uh, try to apply them to, to his idea, and then we move. Yeah? One side is moving and you can pitch your idea to another person. Yeah? Should we make an example? No. Yeah. If, if you, you can pitch your idea yeah, you have from this workshop, you can pitch an idea which, is, which you have like for a long time. Yeah. Or think about the home assignment we had yesterday. Try to make your holidays more entrepreneurial. Try to make your verein or association, your civil engagement more entrepreneurial. Yeah. Maybe your village, maybe your neighborhood. Yeah? You can design your own concept. You can design your, your own startup, your business, connected to your personality. And saying this is really important, especially maybe like for you, because you're younger, to find out, find out what your passion is and to build on this. Yeah? There's a Ken Robinson, maybe like he's, he made like a famous animation video on YouTube, Rethinking Education. Gerhard Hüther is like a neuro, neuro psychologist, um, brain psychologist, um, researcher in Berlin. And he said, so when you find your passion, you're more motivated to learn something, to do something, yeah? And then, like, even they found out that the brain is making new connections in, uh, here in the head. Yeah? So find your passion, what really motivates you, and build on this. And <coughs> see, like, what kind of organization you can build fitting to your talents. The other way to think like an entrepreneur is that until your idea, becomes a success, everybody thinks, okay, he's a little bit crazy, he's like, he's like a little bit like a fool maybe, this will never work. Yeah? So what you, you have to tolerate, tolerate this ambiguity. Yeah? So it's like a, a special term for this, and they found out like that entrepreneurs have this in common, that you, 
bu I'm building on something which is not really put into uh, reality, yeah? and you have to you have to tolerate criticism, yeah, and see like okay, maybe it works like this, maybe it works like that, and go like in it's not like a linear process, but you go in iterations. And another thing is, don't work just on one idea, work on many ideas. Yeah? Normally, maybe like a hundred, maybe like five to six ideas at the same time. Yeah? <coughs> Similar like maybe like Walt, what uh, Walt Disney did. He had like uh, six or seven different desks yeah, where he was working on and maybe try to find like certain locations for your different ideas and try to work on many ideas at the same time and don't fall into love with just one idea. Yeah? Marcel Proust said like it's not so about like finding the new thing, finding, discovering something new, but seeing the land with new eyes, yeah? with your own eyes and then put this into reality. Another thing, like how to think like an entrepreneur, normally what's, what's happening is that you have to present your pitch idea to business angels or investors or experts yeah? or consultants or even like some certain coaches. Yeah? The problem with this is that these people come from a different background yeah? and I now have like a different environment. We think, and it's really hard to approach them anyway, yeah? we think it's much better to find sparing partners, people who are on the, in the same boat, like what we did here in the speed pitching, and we're also working on ideas, pitch them their ideas and get feedback from them because they're in the same role as you. Yeah? Maybe. What is sparing partner? Sparing partner is like, it comes from boxing, right? And boxing, yeah? Boxing, yeah, boxing. Yeah. In boxing, you you train, yeah. Boxing, yeah, for the for the real fight, yeah. But you don't try to um, kill the other person in the training, yeah. You try to okay, where's the defense, how's his offense, yeah, and try to uh, do sparring with him, yeah. The same like in other sports, yeah, sparring partner concepts. Can I say something? Yeah. Exactly. And for, for entrepreneurs it means like before you go into the into the market, yeah, into the real life, yeah. Train your idea, train yourself with other entrepreneurs, with other sparring partners who are working also on ideas. Yeah? Maybe it's not so hard. Maybe like uh, you just need like some creativity, put things simple, and have some vision where it goes, some values you want to see in life. Don't try to to live like the conventional rules by the conventional rules. Make your own rules. Try to think what is the function of it, and be curious and free, and free to learn. Take a different view of the world. Take you your view of the world and try to put it into reality. So, and this is what we tried like <coughs> in the beginning with the paradigms, with the new paradigms of entrepreneurship. We all have ideas, we all want to see the ideas come into reality. Yeah? And with the distinction between entrepreneurship and business administration and using components and having time to work on your concept, yeah? you're avoiding some bottlenecks, some pitfalls other entrepreneurs do. They are overworked, they need like a lot of capital, they do the usual marketing, and then the ideas get stuck in the middle. They don't become as big as they deserve. So the presentation later will be, um, will be sent to YEP. It will also be on, on our website, entrepreneurship.de. There also you can see the videos. We have like an idea competition with UNESCO online. This is like where the ideas, uh, where the videos uh, came from. And once a year, we have a big summit in, um, on the 11th and 12th of October in Berlin. Um, it's mainly in German, but uh, some um, 
presentations are also in English. <laughs> so that's like the part, that's my part. Um, do you have any questions or feedback? <laughs> yeah, but capitalism is just like a term we use like for the nearly last 50 years. Economy is centuries old. Yeah? The old philosophers said economy. Yeah? And this is about like what Henry Ford said, that more people are participating in the economy. Yeah? And actively participating with their, with their startups, with their ideas. Yeah. And coming back to this eBiro example, of course it seems like eBiro is just like a normal company, yeah. But you can also say eBiro is helping other entrepreneurs to free themselves from from the normal secretary services, yeah. They outsource this, yeah, and have more time to work on their entrepreneurial concept, yeah. So eBiro is basically a component for other entrepreneurs, yeah. Of course, you can say it's like it's a capitalist ca company, but yeah, it's making money. That's, there's not so much wrong with that. Okay. okay. Bring things to uh, a close for, for uh, this work workshop, and um, and thanks, Simon, for his. Uh,